I feel myself going through grieving of what my body used to be like. <sighs> of course, the wild hunger, like cellulite, our friends, you know? Hi there, my name is Daniela. I am a licensed therapist and I've been providing mental health services for the last six years. I'm here to give you tips on mental health, help you improve your personal development and have real talks. This time, a real talk about pregnancy. As some of you already know, I am pregnant and it's my first time, it's my first baby. I am about 16 weeks, but I want to share a little bit of my experience because I think it's been really raw and real. And with my background in mental health, I'm able to relate it a lot to mental health struggles that I'm sure many other women have gone through. I've talked to many friends and they have told me, yeah, that happened to me. I was shameful or scared to talk about it, but I experienced it. So I hope that those of you who are pregnant or were pregnant and went through what I'm going through feel validated and happy to know that there's someone else out there struggling with what you're going through. All right, so let's talk. I found out that I was pregnant two weeks into my pregnancy, super early. So obviously by then my body had not gone through any physical changes. However, I remember one of my first thoughts being, oh my God, I can't wait until I'm super pregnant and I have this huge belly, it's gonna look so cute. Well, that thought comes and goes depending on the day these days. <laughs> Although I'm motivated to make all these efforts to create a healthy and wonderful baby, I also feel the hit on my mental health as I see these changes in my physical body. I have been struggling with body image problems. And just for context, body image is a subjective idea that you have about your body and how it looks. It doesn't necessarily translate to how other people see you or the most objective measure of yourself, but it's about how you feel and how you see yourself, if that makes sense. So body image is associated with our self-esteem, our self-identity, our self-value, self-love, and all those positive thoughts about who we are. On the contrary, severe body image problems are associated with depression, anxiety, eating disorders, body dysmorphia, OCD even, and low sex drive, and of course, low self-esteem. When it comes to pregnancy, recent evidence indicates that body image plays a very important role in da -da -da -da, the scary prenatal and postpartum depression. So having a good relationship with your body and your body image is like a very important factor for the sake of your mental health and the health of the baby as well. Building a human is amazing, but let's be honest, that doesn't mean that you're automatically thrilled to see your body change and deal with discomfort that you've never experienced before. Your body is literally changing daily, biologically, physically, all of it. As I said, I'm only 16 weeks pregnant and a lot of people can tell I'm pregnant when I go out, not showing my belly, of course, in normal clothes. People really can tell. Friends that know me and know that I'm pregnant see me out and they're like, you don't look pregnant. Nonetheless, I don't recognize my body at all. And there's nothing I can do to change that. Because pregnancy is such a rebellion. From the moment you conceive your baby, your baby's alive, that's it. Your body gets a mind of its own. It prioritizes the baby at every time. Your body and all the organisms inside begin to make sure that this baby is safe, it's growing, and everything's just rolling the way it should be. And as I said earlier, you want to do the same. You want to be congruent with these changes. Many times our aesthetic needs of how we look just go to the back burner. <laughs> What's first is taking care of this baby, making sure it feels fed and rested. And on days that I'm busy, you really don't think about it that much. But on days that I'm not busy, oh my God, I feel myself going through shock and grieving of what my body used to be like. On top of that, on days that you're having a good day, you're not even thinking about it, people remind you, get ready for it. You're gonna get so much unsolicited opinions and advice that you're like, whoa, whoa wait, I, we're not even talking about me, like what? <laughs> so yes, even on days that you're not thinking about your body image, people will remind you, they will tell you that you look too big or too small or not at all and not eat whatever. I was at a restaurant one of these days and one of my friends took away the spicy sauce from me. I was like, what? you're pregnant, you can't do spicy. I do spicy daily. My siracha lives with me in this house and I never abandon it. We all know that it comes from a good place, but it can be annoying. 
Anyways, let's start covering some particular body changes that you may see when you're pregnant. For starters, let me just blame it all on the hormones, or should I say the damn hormones. <laughs> when we get pregnant, our body becomes a nuclear bomb of hormones, and this is what causes a lot of the changes, including breast augmentation and tenderness unbearable some days bigger tummy increase of body fat retention that looks like cellulite our friends you know those acne and other skin problems like dark spots and rashes hair loss in my case i had severe hair loss the first trimester i was so worried i thought i was gonna be bald and then doesn't end there with the hair hair growth in the most unwanted places i was like wait why is my hair going here and here and here and yeah my laser treatment that i did for a year out of the window never existed that money the hair goes back to its natural growth rate not fun stuffy nose at night sometimes i can't breathe at all in the middle of the night sometimes i just have to get some pumps of nasal spray because i really can't breathe of course the wild hunger shortness of breath thank god for me being able to edit videos because it's many times i have to take little breaks when i'm speaking and catch my breath itchiness also hormonal changes in sleep and i can go over and over but yeah there's more considering these changes the body that you knew fades away and you begin to see a whole new body that you probably haven't experienced in your whole lifespan oh and did i forget to mention that the hormones make you extremely emotional so crying about all of these changes happens very naturally a few days ago i had an hour long cry my husband was just holding me and saying it's going to be okay and i'm like no it's not gonna be okay you don't understand i'm screwed yeah that was the day that i realized that i have gained about 10 pounds in the last 16 weeks knowing that fact and also knowing that there's nothing i can't or should do about it freaked me out i know that this is starting to sound like a loaded event but i have a point pregnancy is beautiful but it's mentally and physically challenging and if you are pregnant like me and you are grieving your old body like me i want to tell you that you're not alone this is normal and this is human and there is no shame in loving your body but also feeling so annoyed at your body at the same time but well let's give this video a positive twist and talk about ways to cope with bad body image days during your pregnancy do research. This is one of the things that has helped me the most. Surfing the internet, reading books, watching YouTubers have a real talks, talking with new moms. When I look at the evidence and I see that biologically speaking, what I'm going through makes sense and hear other women speaking about their experiences being pregnant and they share their personal struggles, I feel validated. And then when I look at how these problems can affect my mental health, I'm like, mm -mm let's go we have to do something to help ourselves and now which brings me to number two one of the things that i find very helpful is to talk to my safe people what i mean by safe is people that i know are very good listeners that can understand me that are going to offer me positive regard and support. These are the people that I can tell them literally everything. Like, I feel ugly AF today, or I really can't stand my body today. And they listen, they grasp what I'm saying and how I'm feeling. Sometimes they just redirect my energy into doing something fun with me. Sometimes they give me a hug, or sometimes we just talk about it and I gain more perspective. And I also feel like I let that weight out of my body. Number three, based on a study, women who are strongly concerned with the body changes that they go through pregnancy have an overall more negative body evaluation of their appearance. This is a risk factor for depression. So just to clarify, the strong concerns about the body changes causes an overall negative body image idea that 
can lead to depression. On the contrary, the same study found that only a positive attitude towards maternity and pregnancy were the most important protective factor for depression. For that reason, it is absolutely important that you change your idea about what these changes mean. These body changes are responsible for providing the perfect environment for your baby. We have to be grateful for all that cellulite, bigger belly, tender boobs, all that fun stuff because it all has a bigger purpose. Number four, try to compensate for the things that you're not a fan of in the moment. I learned this from one of my favorite fitness gurus, Sasha Fitness. I saw her YouTube videos when she was pregnant and she would say that one of the first things that she does when she wakes up is to get her face pretty. I have never been into makeup before. I actually dread to put on makeup and take it off. I think it's a whole mission and it bothers me. But since I'm pregnant, I'm following that advice. It's a cool hobby. It gives me distraction. It stimulates my brain with new information. And on top of that, it makes me feel pretty. I may not have any apps to show this weekend, but for sure I can show off my lipstick and new eyeshadow. Also, something I've been reading about on the internet is that at least the makeup and trying to get yourself pretty gives you a sense of having that control back. Remember, when we are not pregnant in a regular life, if you care about your body and you feel like your body is going on the wrong direction, you pick it up, you start eating healthier, you start working out, and you're able to have full control over how, well, not full control, but a lot of control on how you look. So when we're pregnant, we lose that and we feel like we're grieving that control. As I told you earlier, I felt sad because there's nothing I can do about it or I should do about it. But hey, wait, there are other things that I can do. Number five and a similar one, embrace your inner fashionista. I'm not very big on this topic, so hopefully you can give me some tips, but I have seen so many YouTubers having a blast with decorating their body with like new fashion throughout their pregnancy and it's so fun. It's another way to look and feel pretty and gain some control over how you look. Go big on self-care. This one has honestly saved my life. Listen to your body. Instead of being your body's enemy, become its best friend. What is the body saying? I'm tired, get the naps that you need to get and enjoy them. When else can you be a bear, a couch potato, sleeping all day and people are gonna be like, you go girl, do it, enjoy yourself. No, people are gonna call you lazy, they're gonna say you're gonna do stuff, whatever. But when you're pregnant, they all want you to sleep, they all want you to get your snacks. It's fabulous. So enjoy your pregnancy, listen to your body, do the self-care that you need to do. Eat healthy food so your tummy feels good and your digestion is flowing. Watch lots of movies, get a lot of walks outdoors, do journaling and request a lot of hugs. I love hugs and it makes me feel better. It's part of my self-care routine. One that I'm working on is setting boundaries with people. I know, I know that the voice of experience matters and I respect it, but many people that have been pregnant or have had experiences with pregnant people feel entitled to give unsolicited advice and tell you how you're gonna do pregnancy. As I said earlier, they'll make comments on your belly and regardless if it's big or small and what they say, you're not gonna like it. Unfortunately, and by the way, this is a pro mental health tip for you. We can't control what people say, talk, think. We can't control other people. It's not in our circle of control. However, we have control over how we respond to those comments. So if it's affecting you and if you don't want to hear it anymore, you have the choice to educate these people or create boundaries with them. And in some cases, create some distance with them if that's what's best for you. Some responses I'm trying to practice are, don't worry about it, I got this. Oh, I'm already going through so much. Honestly, I don't want to hear it anymore. Look, actually, I get very sensitive when people make comments about my body. And you know, right now the hormones are real. So it's best if we don't talk about it. A very important one, something you need to start doing if you are not. Connect with your body. Your body is your friend. Remember that. I have a doula friend who's amazing. I told her about some of my struggles and she told me, when was the last time that you made an effort to connect with your body? I was like, hmm, it's 
been a while. When you're not connecting with your body, you are disconnected from your friend and also from your baby. Sometimes I even forget I'm pregnant. I'm like, oh, wow, there's, there's someone here I need to take care of. But for real, this has been very helpful for me. When I'm feeling upset, I immediately think of the word disconnection. I'm disconnected with my body. Let's go connect. Pro mental health tip, if you can name it, you can tame it. If I know what's happening, disconnection, I go try to do something about it. One of my favorite things to do is prenatal yoga and also meditations. Oh God, the sunset is almost here and I need more light, but I'll be quick. Almost done. Oh, too much, okay gratitude. So on my worst days when my brain is not being my friend and I can't think positive thoughts, I just grab a journal and write down a few things that I'm grateful for that relate to my pregnancy. I also like to write down mantras. On better mental health days, I just make, you know, a conscious effort to change my negative thoughts for a gratitude thought. I think about why I'm grateful for my body and my baby and me and everything. Oh, and bonus, music. I love listening to music that connects me to my baby. I created a Spotify playlist that's called My Baby Songs and I just listen to it and it just makes me feel better. You know, music produces endorphins, always, always lights up my mood and it's all beautiful. Well, my hope for you is that you don't ignore yourself, neglect yourself or abandon yourself. This pregnancy is such a unique experience. Talk to moms out there that have multiple kids. They will tell you every pregnancy is different and unique. So make sure you make yours beautiful and unique. It's up to you. You are the only one that can provide that to yourself. On another note though, if you have a history with severe depression, anxiety, eating disorders, body dysmorphia, or OCD, I think it's best if you go and see a therapist. It will really help you prevent signs of postpartum depression and it will also keep you accountable to stay happy and have a healthy pregnancy. Well, this baby is ready for dinner, so I'm gonna let you go. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon in another video.